Hello students. Good morning to you all. I welcome you to today's class. I believe you are all prepared. I implore you to get seated properly. Avoid distraction. Get your writing materials as we continue. Today we'll be looking into an interesting topic together. Again, titled Farming System. Farming System. But before then, let's quickly look to the correction of previous assignment. Remember last week we treated fishery with the fine fishery stated types of fishery or classification of fishery and at the end of the lesson you were asked to state examples of bony fish and cartilaginous fish. Let's look to the examples of bony fish. One, we have tilapia, catfish, perch, moonfish and so on. There are many examples of bony fish. While cartilaginous fishes will have shark, dog fin and so on. So let's take up the examples of last week assignment. And as well you were asked to draw and label a fish. This is a very good example of a well labeled fish. I implore you to look to this diagram very well and check out on what you have drawn as well. Study the parts very well on your own. Very, very important for you to be able to draw a fish being that we have treated fishery and you should be able to label it perfectly. Okay, let's go to today's topic. The learning objective stated below one define farming system state types of farming system explain shifting cultivation outline the advantages and disadvantages of shifting cultivation and so on generally you are expected to be able to explain kinds of or types of farming system take note of this this is what you are expected to know at the end of this class. Let's go straight to the topic, meaning of farming system. Farming system is defined as adopted method of crops and animal production by people or farmers. Farmers adopt different methods in crop production and in animal rearing. Adopted method, adopted method of crops and animal production by people or by farmers. Different methods adopted by farmers in crop production. This method adopted is what we refer to as farming system. Take note of that. It's simply defined as an adopted method of crop and animal production by farmers or by people. Types of farming system. Types of farming system. One, shifting cultivation. 2. Mist farming. 3. Pastoral farming. These are the three major types of farming system. Shifting cultivation, mist farming, pastoral farming. Shifting cultivation, we tag as well with it, bush following. Bush following. Bush following and shifting cultivation can come together. Then we have mist farming and pastoral farming. Let's take it up one after the other. Shifting cultivation. This is a system of farming in which a farmer abandons a plot of land after planting on it for two or more years. The farmer then moves to another land and continues with his cultivation of crops. The land abandoned is allowed to rest and regain its lost nutrient. In that period of living the farmland, the land regained its lost nutrient through the decomposition of dead remain of plants and animals. The word shifting, movement, moving from one point to another. A farmer is having two or three plots of land cultivated on plot A in first year. 
after that first year, move to plot B or plot C. The former allow plot A to regain its lost nutrient because in the period of cultivating on this plot of land, the land has lose or lost its nutrient within that period. Then the farmer leave the land for two or more years to another land in order for the land to regain its lost nutrient before coming back to that particular land after regaining its lost nutrient as well bush following. That is why I tag both together shifting cultivation through bush following. The farmer then have intention of coming back to that land when the land has regained its lost nutrient. Let's take note of that. Under shifting cultivation, food crops are mainly grown. Different crops are mainly grown. You have maize, you have yam, you have potato. Different crops are grown in shifting cultivation. Let's take note of that. The farmland regained its lost nutrient, remember, through the decomposition of dead remains of plants and animals. Let's take note of that. Advantages of shifting cultivation. One, shifting cultivation enables the land to regain its lost nutrient. That's the first one. It enables the land to regain its lost nutrient. Remember the aim. The reason why the farmer moved from one point to another is for the land to regain its lost nutrient. Two, it is simple, cheap, and effective method of restoring fertility. The farmer does not need to buy fertilizer in restoring his fertility. Remember, we have treated green manure. We have treated farmyard manure. So take note of this. The farmer does not need to buy fertilizer, which is inorganic manure. The dead leaves decomposes over a long time. Thereafter, adding nutrient to the soil. The plant cover helps to check erosion because then the farmland definitely will go back to bush. That will help to check erosion. Disadvantages of shifting cultivation. Disadvantages of shifting cultivation. One, shifting cultivation can only be practiced where land is abundant, where the land is abundant. It cannot be practiced where land is not abundant because the farmer need to move from plot A to B. A farmer that is having just one plot of land cannot practice shifting cultivation because he has no place to move to. A farmer practicing shifting cultivation must have minimum of three plots of land because he or she will allow plot A to rest within the period of two years, minimum of two years. From three years, four years, the land would have regained its lost nutrient before the farmer then will come back to that particular land for cultivation again. I believe we are following. Two, it can only be practiced where population is low. Shifting cultivation can only be practiced where population is low. It cannot be practiced where population is high because people need to move from one plot of land to another. Under communal land tenor system, shifting cultivation is not easily practiced because it's, the land is fragmented, it's shared among the community members. It can only be practiced where you have less population, where people can move from one plot of land to another. Three, much time, energy, and money are required in clearing new farmland. Because the farm has been left for a while, the farm go back to bush, for the farmer to come back to that particular land, he needs to clear the land before he can cultivate on the land. So energy is required, time is required, money is required for the farmer to clear the new land or where he is going to as well. The farm is moving to, he needs to clear it. The one he left when coming back to it, he needs to clear it. Let's take note of that. The second one we have is mist farming mixed farming remember we stated types of farming system shifting cultivation or bush following mixed farming and pastoral farming 
Let's quickly look to mist farming. I believe we are following. This is a system of farming whereby the farmer raises both crops and animals on the same land. Crops and animals are raised on the same land. Take note of this word, mist farming. A farming system that involves the farmer raising both crops and animals on the same farm land, not on different land. I believe we are following. Crops that are grown include rice, maize, yam, cassava. Food crops are mainly grown as well. Food crops are mainly grown. Different crops are grown under mist farming. Then you have different animals that are reared. Animals like sheep, like goats, cattle, and so on. Different animals are reared. Grazing animals generally are reared under mist farming. Grazing animals. They are called grazing animals. These are animals mainly reared under mist farming. Advantages of mist farming. One, animal droppings are used as manure to improve soil fertility. Animal dropping are used to improve the soil fertility. The farmer does not need to buy fertilizer. The farmer does not need to include any form of fertilizer on his farmland. Animal dropping on his own is referred to as Farmyard manure. Farmyard manure is directly added to the soil as a result of the animal dropping. The animal dropping decomposes over time, adding nutrients to the soil. Two, remain of crops and maize, such as maize. Remains of crops such as maize, rice may be used to feed the animals. The plants that are left after harvest. The farmer would have harvested his crops. The remaining ones, or unused ones, not required, are mainly used in feeding the animals. The farmer does not need to move his animal from one place to another looking for what to use in feeding the animals. I believe we know, we, we have seen pastoral farmers, we have seen people, cattle rearers, moving their animals from one place to another because they are not practicing mist farming. That is why they can move from one place to another. In mist farming, the farmer does not need to move his animal. Where he is cultivating his crop is the same place he's rearing his animals. So the remains of the crop, like maize, rice, are then used in feeding the animals. Why the animal droppings are used as manure to improve the soil fertility? You see how important it is to practice mist farming. There is no stress in practicing mist farming from the, from the farmer in taking care of the animals or adding fertilizer to the soil. There is always alternative for the farmer when there is failure or bad crop year, as both crops and animals will not fail. A farmer that is practicing just monocropping, take for example, monocropping, Monocropping involves the cultivation of only one type of crop on a farmland. When there is a bad crop year, when there is a failure in the production of the crops or low yield, the farmer has nowhere to fall back to. But under mist farming, when there is a failure of crop, the farmer will use animal as alternative. The animal will serve as alternative to the farmer. The farmer does not need to complain because animals will as well raise money for the farmer. So it, the farmer has alternative when there is a bad crop here. Let's take note of that. It's dependent, depending on either the crop or the animal rear. The farmer cannot lose totally. Disadvantages. Disadvantages of mist farming. One, mist farming is capital intensive. Capital intensive. Let's take note of this word. It requires money. Huge amount of money is required for the farmer to buy 
cattle, in rearing, or cultivation of crops. If the animals are not properly managed, they can eat up or destroy the crop. If they are not properly managed, let's take note of that as well. The farmer might not be able to manage the animals. The farmer might not be able to control the animals. We know animals are very difficult to control. When the farmer is unable to control the animal, then the animals can eat up the crops, can kill the crops, damage the crops easily. Let's take note of that. So a farmer practicing mist farming should be knowledgeable in order to be able to manage the crops and the animals together. The farmer must be knowledgeable in both crops and animal husbandry. The farmer must be both knowledgeable in animal husbandry and crop production. Let's take note of that. The farmer may have divided attention as one of the disadvantages as well. The farmer may have divided attention because mis farming requires great skill. A farmer looking into animals and as well cultivating crop might not be focused with one because he's handling two things at a time. So the farmer might have divided attention. These are the disadvantages of mist farming. Let's quickly look to pastoral farming. Pastoral farming. But before then, I will employ us to just pick up our pen and write out three animals reared under mist farming. Three animals reared under mist farming. And three crops grown under mist farming. Alright, I believe we have all taken that. Let's look to pastoral farming. Pastoral farming is a system of farming where a farmer keeps only grazing animals. Only grazing animals. Like cattle, sheep, goats, and so on. There are many animals that are called grazing animals. Ruminant animals as well. Grazing animals are kept under pastoral farming. And it is mainly practiced in the northern part of Nigeria. It is mainly practiced in northern part of Nigeria. Not in southern, not in western part, but mainly northern part of Nigeria. Let's take note of that. Especially in Sudan savannah. We have three types of pastoral farming. One, nomadic herding, ranching, and lay farming. Nomadic herding, ranching, and lay farming. Nomadic herding is a system of pastoral farming which involves the movement of the herdsmen. The movement of the herdsmen, which is animal from one place to another in search of green pasture and water. The farmer needs to move from one place to another. They are called herdsmen. They move with their cattle or with their goats which of the animals they are rearing from one place to another in search of water, in search of pastures to fill the animals. I believe we are following. They move especially during dry season and return back during rainy season. They move down to the southern region or to the western region in search of pastures and water during dry season and they return back to their permanent place during raining season. We know that we have less amount of rainfall in the northern part, and that is exactly where nomadic herding is mainly carried out. So the farmers need to move the cattle or the animals they are rearing from the northern part to the southern or western part in search of pastures and water for feeding the animals. Let's take note of that. Ranching. Ranching. Under ranching, the pastures are properly managed to provide feed for the animals all year round. It involves the management of pastures to provide feed for the animals all year round. The farmer does not need to move his animal from one place to another in search of food and water. The animals are reared in a large expanse of fenced land. 
Take note of that. That is the major word under ranching. The animals are reared under a large expense of land. Fenced land. The land is usually fenced. Pastures are provided. Water is provided. Whatever that is required for the animals for growth and for effective production is usually provided for the animals. Ranching involves rearing of animals in a large fenced land. Large fenced land. We have one in Nigeria called Obudu Kato Ranch. That is a very good example. Obudu Kato Ranch. Obudu Kato Ranch is a very good example of Kato Ranch in Nigeria. Then the last one is lay farming. It's a system of farming in which involves the planting of the planting of forage crops and food crops in alternation. The planting of food crops and forage crops in alternation, e.g., grasses, legumes are planted in order to feed the animals. I believe we are following. All right, we have come to the end of to this class. Take notes. Let's quickly take a recap of what we have learned under farming system. We were able to define it. We have defined farming system as adopted method of crops and animal production by people or farmers. We set types of farming system, shifting cultivation or bush following mixed farming, pastoral farming. These are the three types. We have explained each and every one of them. I employ us to go through very well. Take note of important cues in each discussion. The crops grown and the animal reared are very important under mixed farming. Then pastoral farming, the types of pastoral farming, which we have ranching, nomadic herding, and leaf farming. Take note of what ranching involves, rearing of animal in a large fenced expense of land. Let's take note of that. Lay farming that involves planting of forage crops and food crops in alternation, like grasses, legumes, and feeding the animals. All right, for further reading, take note of this book, look for them and read up. Agricultural Science for GSS2 by S. Omoseke-G, and Essentials of Agricultural Science for GSS2 by N.S. Chukudi Ani. Assignment. Explain four three advantages. Explain four, sorry. Explain four advantages and disadvantages of pastoral farming. Explain four advantages and disadvantages of pastoral farming farming. Let's take note of that. Send your response to the email below vera.ok at greenlandhall.org. Thank you for being part of this class. Vera Okenye is my name. Thank you.